football game of the week. From Nelson Field in Bel Air, it's a special edition of the WTOV9 High School Football Game of the Week. The Bel Air Big Reds, undefeated in 1996, host the Brook Bruins. Hello again, everybody. This is George Kellis chewing on my jawbreaker here this afternoon. It's one of those hot ones because it's mighty nippy out here. And Coach Rich Walensky, an old Fallensby guy yourself, um, the Bruins are struggling right now. The Big Reds are on a roll here. Yeah, and that's uh, that, that's really in favor of the uh, the Big Reds playing at home on uh, on a Saturday afternoon. And, and George, as you pointed out, the Bruins are really struggling. Lost to Wheeling Park last week. Uh, have just not been able to put an offense together and as defense, which is usually uh, the the strong point of, of of Brook, is is really struggling as well. So. Uh, hopefully, maybe Coach Billiard will be able to put it all together today. Uh, he's going to be without his uh, starting uh, tailback, uh, the Boyd kid, and that definitely is going to hurt. So prospects for Brook are not real, real good this afternoon. 24 points sitting out there on the table for Bel Air as they surge toward their third playoff berth in four years. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Timmy Marling on the return for Bel Air out across the 40-yard line to about the 44 where the Big Reds will put it in play first and 10. And this is the second consecutive year that these two teams have played in these kinds of weather conditions. The Bruins, really, uh, it could make their year if they would win here because they the well remember the 25 to nothing whacking that they took at the hands of Bel Air and Jose Davis and company one year ago at Brook. So here are the Bel Air Big Reds, coming in with a record of 7-0. The pass is complete, wide open down the middle, and it's a first down for the Bel Air Big Reds. Chaz Call made the reception, and of course, Ty Massarelli, the quarterback of the Bel Air Big Reds, as we get another look at it. This is a tight end, uh, Chaz Call, uh, up there, and, and I'll tell you, Massarelli has a lot of time to throw the ball. Steps up into the pocket, and uh, Massarelli finds the open, or I'm sorry, Call finds the open area as able to get it up for a first down into ruined territory. At the 36-yard line, Massarelli, who had a big game last week against Indian Valley, lobs it wide open, Ben Taylor! Benny Taylor down to the 10-yard line, and the Bel Air offensive machine wastes no time. About 34 seconds into this football game, they're all the way to the Brook 10-yard line. And again, Massarelli, uh, protection breaking down a little bit, but is able to, to throw up his back foot and throws a perfect strike uh, to number two, their wide receiver, Benny Taylor, that came in motion from, uh, his, uh, from right to left and then found the open area down the middle of the field. Massarelli, this time it's batted away at the line of scrimmage. Number 66, uh, putting a little bit of heat on uh, Massarelli that time. Uh, I don't have him listed on my starting lineup, George, so I, I probably have to look at uh, at the, uh, uh, the the roster, and, and right now I, I don't have his number. Number 66, a defensive uh, end, uh, coming up in there, putting some pressure Nick on. Nick Minda? Nick Minda, yes. Defensive end. Brook in their patented 4-4 defense. Bel Air second down and 10 at the 11-yard line. Massarelli to the air again. Lacondas cannot make the one-handed grab. There were two receivers in the zone. Richie Matterkoski was one of them. Clint Lacondas the other. As a matter of fact, they are the starting setbacks in this Bel Air lineup. And here we go as we look at the Bel Air starting lineup. They got downfield so fast. Massarelli. Matterkoski, Lacondas, Taylor, Allen, and Call. LaRoche, Sechrist, McFeely, Chirpus, and Keller. Third and 10, play action fake. It's caught inside the five yard line. The ball is loose, but Bel Air will have possession of the football. Finally jumping on the loose pigskin right there was John Keller. 
And uh, they're going to be short of the first down, George, and I think that uh, they're going to have to make a decision here whether to go for first down or, or field goal. There it is. Uh, and the ball is stripped away. Lacondas lost grip there for a second, so it is fourth down and one. A long one, I might add, at the three-yard line for the Bel Air Big Reds. Massarelli back on a short drop. He's in trouble. He throws. It's incomplete, in and out of the hands of Clint Lacondas. And the Brook Bruins have held off the Bel Air Big Reds, who cruised down the field effortlessly into scoring position, but then were unable to capitalize. There it is right here, Lacondas at the back of the end zone. The ball is thrown there, and he just can't handle it. And I'm not sure his foot would have been in, George, had he made the catch. So a good defensive uh, stand by, uh, by Brook on this first offensive possession of Belair and Belair did not run the ball once in that possession. They were all passes. And uh, here's the offensive starting lineup for the Bruins. Billy Hunter, Todd Sparinger, Joey Nichols is a tailback. We'll talk about that in a second. That is Joey Nichols out to the 10 yard line, a gain of about seven. Again, Ryan Sherrick, uh, who started the season at the quarterback position is now a wide out along with Phil Soley and Brad Nyman. And uh, your interior front is now Bertram, Falcon, Chad Rockhold, and J.C. McQuiston move in in place of two departed players. Phil McMahon also up front for the Bruins. Nichols again on a good carry as uh, Brooke runs the football out for a first down near the 20-yard line, and they got out of a hole in a hurry. I tell you, they were in the uh, shadow of their own goalpost, George, and on two runs, they've uh, moved it out to almost the 20-yard line. Here it is, just to power off the uh, the left side, and uh, Nichols substituting for an injured Brian Boyd is uh, is doing a nice job in there, getting some nice blocking from the offensive line of Brooke, and uh, they get a first down near the 20, so it's first and 10 from about the 19-yard line. Running back was able to reset right there. You aren't allowed to have a man in motion, and uh, he did not move forward. As long as he's set for a second before the uh, the ball is snapped. That time, Mike uh, Banning, Banning came from his uh, defensive tackle position and was able to uh, to hold Nichols to a very, very short gain, second and nine. Uh, that's Aaron Chirpus, Wes Carter, Mike Banning, Bubba Seacrest, and John Keller along the front. Lemley and Call are the linebackers. Here comes the ball carrier. Laconda, Socor, Allen, and Taylor as the ball carrier here for the Bruins is gang tackled. And Brooke is really uh, strapped without Brian Boyd back there. Nichols is doing a real fine job, and he may be a big factor in this football game. But what this does is it depletes their depth, and uh, they do not have. Of course, their go-to guy, Brian Boyd, who is out with a hand. They've had all kinds of problems. Mike Gilchrist is out of the defensive secondary with an injury. Uh, two players left the team this week, starting interior lineman. Here is the long pass Ooh. in and out of the hands Hunter of the intended pass. receiver, Ryan Sherrick, at midfield. Nice pattern by Sherrick. He's running a post pattern down the middle of the field. They had two deep receivers. Uh, uh, going down the field, it was uh, number 20, Brad Nyman, and uh, number 8, uh, Sherrick. And uh, the ball delivered very well by the sophomore quarterback, uh, Billy Hunter. And uh, almost a good catch, but uh, fell incomplete. will bring up fourth and about 10. Yuchich will do the punting. He's at his own five-yard line. Under some pressure, gets the kick away nicely to midfield where it's taken by Timmy Marling and he's tripped up right there at the 49. Good coverage by the uh, Brooks special teams, uh, number 26 down there in a hurry, uh, making the uh, the tackle for uh, for Brook. And uh, it's going to bring up a first and 10 for uh, Bel Air at about the 49-yard line. And that's number 26, Kirk Faroli. There's Good the job, Bruins Kirk. band right there. And Belair now first and 10 at the Brook 49 with 8.40 to go in the first period. This is Lacondas on the first run of the game, and he will get about five inside the Bruin 45. 
Uh, Ted, Belair's running uh, game is not real, real sophisticated. They do a lot of trapping inside, and that time uh, you saw a little bit of that. Uh, it all works off of Massarelli's uh, ability to throw the ball, and right there you see uh, you know, people just getting turnout blocks and turn-in blocks, and uh, defensive back coming up there making a nice open field tackle for, um, for Brook. Second down and five, Matt Urkoski has a first down at the 30 and out of bounds at the Brook 25 yard line. A nice gain of about 20 yards. Ty Massarelli to Richie Matt Urkoski. And Matt Urkoski right now is a fullback. And I'll explain what uh, the long-term plans are for the junior. They may move him to a wideout next year, which would be uh, his senior season, obviously. They have a couple of young fullbacks that they think are going to be very good ones who are just not ready yet. So, at least for the time being, Matt Urkoski is a fullback. Massarelli, incomplete, and it fell into a dead area. The Bruins did have three or four defensive backs, but none were able to get a good shot at the interception. That Second was, down and ten. That was Lacondas coming out of the backfield. Uh, they had uh, tight end and uh, twins one way, pushed off everything, and then tried to get Lacondas underneath that. And uh, the ball delivered just a little bit high, and he was, in, was not able to handle it. That time, Brooke had a, uh, had a blitz coming off of the corner, uh, number 20. Uh, Sherrick was coming from his outside linebacker position, but Belair picked it up very, very nicely. Massarelli lost the football on the exchange, and these are the kinds of problems we can expect, certainly, on a day where we are having steady rain. The Bruin defenders, Justin Falcon, Phil McMahon, Nick Minda, and Louis Owens. The linebackers are Yuchich, Jeremy Roberts, Todd Sperringer, and Nyman. And the defensive backs today are Joey Nichols, Jeff Findling, and Phil Soley. Third and 13. Massarelli is smacked as he tried to release the football. And it looked like Jeremy Roberts was back in there to break everything up. Number 40, 40, inside linebacker coming on a stunt. They weren't able to pick it up and uh, got his hand up and was able to knock the ball away for, for Brooks. So it's uh, going to bring up fourth down uh, inside the 30-yard uh, line, and it looks like uh, Belair is going to go ahead and go for it. Fourth and about 12. And they might as well uh, punt one in the end zone right here. You're only going to get eight yards out of it anyway at the 28-yard line. Fourth down, a long 12. Massarelli is back, and he throws, and it's going to be incomplete. Chaz called the intended receiver, and we're going to take a timeout. Midway through the first quarter, Brook Nuff Beller defenders get around him after a short gain, and this has been the one strong constant of the Beller football team this year. I'd say going clear back to about 1987. This is the best defensive unit Bel Air has featured. Their starting defensive team has given up only seven points all year, and it's lateral quickness and pursuit that has been the big element for this club this year. Grant Allen, number 12, uh, one of the uh, defensive safeties came up, made the hit. Brooke with a full house backfield right here, and the pass from Hunter is caught by Jeremy Roberts. Now there is an agreement or a disagreement, incomplete. And obviously the Bruin fans don't like it, and the Big Reds fans do as we get another look at it here. Jeremy Roberts really isn't arguing too much. Here it is right here, Hunter delivering the ball, and we're going to see that right it's there the ball is on the ground. Pass. It is an incomplete pass. Good call by the official. That brings on third down and nine from the 30-yard line for the Brook Bruins. And Billy Hunter, the young quarterback, has done a good job of rekindling what was a pretty stagnant offense in the first three games of this season. Play action. Hunter throws, it's incomplete. 
looking for number 20. Uh, Nyman. Kind of coming from his uh, Brad tight end Nyman. position over there and uh, trying to get underneath. Uh, they had one wide receiver pushing off and then trying to get him underneath. And the ball delivered just a little bit too high right here. You can see he's behind the linebacker. And uh, the one thing that, that the young hunter boy will have to learn how to do is just put a little bit of touch on that, be able to drop it over those linebackers. And he will learn that in due time because he does have an excellent arm. And he is a sophomore. Yes, he is. And they've got some dandy underclassmen. Uh, I would think that the Bruins uh, should be able to regroup and get right back after it. Look at this punt. Wow, wonderful. This catch. is out of here. I mean, all the way back to about the 12-yard line. A punt of titanic proportions. When you consider that the line of scrimmage was the 30, you are looking at a, about a 60-yard punt right there, just shy of that. I tell you, just a great yards. punt. He just launched that thing like a rocket. And uh, wonderful punt. Uh, the punter for uh, Brooke is, is that number 36, George, their punter, Don Alexander? Uh, on the first, Yuchich uh, was the... Okay, Todd Yuchich. I thought it was number nine. Yeah. So Bel Air has lost all of that great field position in a big hurry. And Massarelli throws high, but it's caught on the far side of the field. Matterkoski made the reception. Number nine, Nuchitz on the stop right there, Matikoski coming out of the backfield. And it, it, it's so difficult to cover this uh, Bel Air offense, George, because they have so many receivers they put into the pattern. They have their uh, two wideouts, then they have their tight end, and, and then every once in a while, their, one of their backs is going to get into the pattern. So, you know, you have four receivers on almost every, every play coming in. The pass is caught by Chaz Call, and uh, he went down at the point of the reception. Bel Air fans think that he was able to restabilize himself and get running. We'll see it on the replay right here. See right here, here's Massarelli hitting call the tight end. And yeah, it looked like his left knee was down there, George. So it was a good call by the official. All right, first and 10, Bel Air at its own 23-yard line. The one thing Budrow does as well as any coach is coaches defensive backs. Some very, very good passing offenses have had difficulty doing everything that they would like to do against Brook defenses over the years. Massarelli throws, he's got a man, what a catch down here. Big yardage inside the Brook 30 to the 24 yard line. Grant Allen, number 12, got behind the defender and Massarelli laid it right in there, put it up and, uh, and gave Allen an opportunity to run under it. Here it is right here, great camel work. And a nice catch, he just stretched out those hands, looked the ball into his hands, made a good catch. Big game for Belair, first and 10 inside the 25-yard line of Brook. You know, Massarelli does not throw the prettiest <coughs> ball in the world. They're kind of wobbly looking things at times, but he gets them there, man. And this is Matter Koski. I think they're gonna say that the ball was jarred yeah. loose as he hit the ground. Belair will retain possession as Matter Koski is inside the Brook 20 to about the 18-yard line. It'll be second down and four. He was just uh, trying to reach for some extra yards here, George. He was already down. If you watch it on the replay, uh, he's just going to reach right here for some extra yards right there, and the ball is out. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Lacondas in motion. Massarelli in a crowd, and he is surrounded. Good, good coverage downfield. They had five receivers out, too, <clears throat> so his, uh, his uh, protection broke down a little bit. And the Brook Bruin defense, led by uh, number 60, Phil McMahon, uh, did a good job of getting to him. And uh, he stepped up into the pocket, and, uh, and the pocket just collapsed. So good coverage by that defensive secondary of Brook. McMahon, a junior, and he is going to be a monster next year, especially if he keeps after it in the weight room in the offseason. He started last year as a sophomore and uh, is one fine football player. Here is Massarelli throwing, the ball is caught. I think it's a first down. Yeah, it's well past the uh, the first down marker. George, he should have a first down, and that's number two. Ben Taylor. Benny Taylor, and what a nice receiver he is. A nice big target, he runs real disciplined patterns. He's able to find the open area. Here it is right here. Throws a strike right on the two, and uh, good coverage uh, you know, by the, uh, the Bruin defender, but uh, the ball was perfectly thrown and a good catch by Ben Taylor. First and 10. 
Belair at the 11-yard line. They go to the run. Matter Koski. He'll get a couple, maybe three. And we're talking about Benny Taylor. He's featured in our open for the WTOV9 High School Football Game of the Week, making a nice reception during last year's playoffs. So every week, uh, he's one of those guys that you see at the top of the show. Number 68, Justin Falcon, uh, defensive tackle for Brook, uh, made the tackle right there. Uh, Matikoski, a very short gain of about one, will bring up second and nine. The delay, Lacondas. Lacondas to Bob Lacondas to about the five yard line. It was a lead draw to Matikoski, or I'm sorry, to uh, Lacondas. Uh, Matikoski, the lead blocker on that. Uh, opened up nice at the line of scrimmage, but the linebackers recovered very, very well. Uh, right here, as you can see, uh, nice Jeremy tackle Roberts. by number 44, Jeremy Roberts, uh, holding it to a short gain. It'll bring up third and five. So this is where Bel Air ran into trouble earlier as uh, they moved the ball fluidly to this point. And Massarelli is sacked. Number 66 coming in for uh, for Book. That's uh, Nick John, Minda. Yeah, yeah, Nick Minda. That's right. And I tell you, he's only a sophomore. George, 5'11", 233 pound defensive tackle. Watch him right here. Little There's trouble a little right, up there. right there. And Minda comes from his defensive end position, and boom. That'll be our around. first sack, and uh, for our check for a sack program, Kroger donates 50 to the OVAC, and that's 50 right there. Bel Air now with Justin Homer, the freshman attempting a field goal, and it is wide. So I tell you, Brooke has dodged two bullets down here early in the uh, first uh, quarter, and that time Homer uh, kick was high enough and long enough, but wide to the right. Brooke will take over at its own 20. Bel Air absolutely brutal offensive uh, attack getting up field and into scoring position and bogging down in the red zone Nichols carries and he is swarmed by a lot of black jerseys and there's, there's a, a flag. flag thrown right on top of somebody's head that was thrown by the referee and I think we're going to see an unsportsmanlike conduct dead ball personal foul against Belair so that's, we're going to tack 15 yards onto this and, and Brooke has an injured player down That just was uh, an ill-advised boo-boo there. Uh, the Big Reds have played so well and have not made very many mistakes. And uh, that's just not good from their perspective. It's number 45 that's down for, for Brooke uh, George. Sparinger. That's uh, Todd Sparinger, their starting fullback. Move it up to the 37. The Bruins will have a first down and 10. And uh, Bel Air has had uh, two impressive drives inside the 10-yard line and uh, have come up empty. And then Brooke has been able to get out of bad field position. Of course, the 58-yard punt a short while ago by Ujic uh, and forced uh, Bel Air to go some 88 yards to get, get into scoring range right there. Bill Cowers show coming up tomorrow morning at 1130. Uh, that will be followed by the NFL on NBC, a doubleheader, Miami at the Philadelphia Eagles and the to Steelers in Houston in what ought to be a rather physical joust. Sports Sunday with Don Sloan, in-depth highlights from the NFL and college game Sunday at 11.30 with the Nacho Man. First and 10, Brooke and Jeremy Roberts Jeremy gets the Roberts call and he slashes to the 40. Number 12, Timmy DeSirio uh, comes in. Uh, in on the uh, that time the as, as an extra backer in a power eye formation and uh, came over the uh, the left side for some good positive yardage, a game of about four. We'll bring up second and six. And uh, right here we can see uh, number 44 for Brook uh, making a good strong run. It's uh, Jeremy Roberts. Up four, bring up second down and six. Second down and six for the Bruins who are employing this power eye type thing back here. Here's a pitch back. Nichols the ball Joey Nichols is about a yard and a half short of the first down at the 45-yard line. 
the uh, belly option is, uh, is is a play that is <clears throat> very much in the repertoire of, uh, of Brooke. They've run it for years, and uh, they run it very, very well. And right here, you can see a uh, uh, nice uh, option play run by uh, by Hunter, the, uh, the sophomore quarterback. Does a nice job. Perfect pitch. Good pitch relationship by the tailback, Nichols. Third and about two. Nichols is in big trouble. Number 58, Bubba Seacrest got to the ball carrier very, very quickly, did a great job of coming off his block and working his way down the line and was able to catch Nichols from behind and then the rest of the Bel Air defense led by uh, number two, Benny Taylor. Uh, Benny Taylor comes up and stops Nichols for a loss of about one, so it's going to bring up fourth and about three. Well, the three-year veteran, Bubba Seacrest, along with his fellow third-year mate, Benny Taylor, doing the work on defense. And there you see Budrow as we come to the end of the first quarter. There is no score. We'll be right back. to punt to the elite level next year because they are well stocked with skilled people. Boyd will be back. Hunter's only a sophomore. Nichols, the featured back here today, is only a sophomore. Jeremy Roberts, the fullback, is a junior. And there's another great punt by Usage. And uh, Good Grant coverage. Allen is smothered at his own 18-yard line. So what the Bruins are going to have to do is develop an interior line in the offseason because their play along the interior line this this year has just not been consistent enough to get the job done against the the level of competition that they're playing and that's where it all starts george is with the offensive line and uh, you know if if it's not there then you know you're going to have some problems regardless of how good your offensive backs really are I'm going to have a Penalty flag here, and down. I think that maybe somebody from Brook may have got into the neutral zone. There was a pre-shift position by uh, by Belair, and when they uh, shifted into their down position, it looked like uh, somebody from uh, Brook came offside. Looked like uh, number 66, and uh, we've called his number quite a bit this afternoon uh, defensively. That's Nick Minda. Belair with first down five at its own 23-yard line. No score here in the second period. Belair has had two good scoring opportunities. Brooke has not yet made a charge, but now the Bruin defenders are getting after Richie Matarkoski. And that was number 63, big defensive tackle, Lewis Owen, who is only a junior, 5'10", 266. Here it is right here. Uh, Block comes, he comes off the block very, very well and is able to get to Matikoski before he can get, get started. So it's going to be a very short gain of maybe about one. He'll bring up second and about four. Lacondas in motion. And usage came in unblocked and drills a shaken up Ty Massarelli. I tell you, usage number nine came off that corner linebacker. They've been doing a lot of blitzing with their corner so far, and nobody picked him up. Matikoski ran right by him, and uh, Massarelli being a left-hander, this is his blind side, and here you can see him come untouched, and bang, gets to him for a big sack. So that's another check for a sack from Kroger's. You betcha. Number two on the afternoon. It'll be a third down now, and 11. Clear back at the Bel Air 17-yard line. Massarelli has time, throws down the near sideline. It's batted away nicely. That's number eight coming from his free safety position. That's Ryan Sherrick. And uh, the ball uh, laid up there, uh, intended for uh, number 31 from uh, Bel Air. That is Chaz, Chaz Call. Call and, uh, did a nice job of coming over to the football and is able to knock it away. Incomplete. Fourth down and 11 for Belair. And this is one time they did not move the sticks even though they got a penalty on first down and making it first and five. They end up fourth and 11. And for the first time in this game, the Bruins figure to get excellent field position. And we're seeing some pretty good punts here. Ben Taylor smacks one down inside the 45. And it rolls out of bounds at the 43-yard line where the Bruins will put it in play, but 
Brook will have its best field position thus far this afternoon. Game of the week coming up next Friday night. The Caddis Cardinals at the Union Local Jets, and it is the Caddis Cardinals' last stand as far as the playoffs are concerned. They are now in a must-win situation to win their remaining two games. The Union Local Jets, who are probably uh, one of the outstanding teams given their record right now. What are they, five and three, something along those lines? They are one good football team. Almost knocked off unbeaten Bridgeport a couple of weeks ago, gave Indian Creek a hard time, and uh, played very tough into the fourth quarter. There's number 45, the ball carrier. That's Todd Sparinger, the fullback, who's trying to run a little trap inside, and you can see uh, number 66 uh, gets trapped right there. And uh, But those linebackers are so quick, and the defensive back so quick for Belair, able to hold it to a very short gain of one. Ball loose, recovered by the Big Reds, and Bubba Seacrest was on it. And I'll tell you, the guy that caused all of that from Belair was number 52, Mike Banning. He got to the quarterback, knocked the ball away. We'll take a look at it. There it is, the belly option, and boom, right there. He just didn't have the handle after he made the fake to the fullback. He sort of lost the ball right there, and uh, Banning put the big hit on him, and Belair uh, gets an opportunity here on the... Uh, 43-yard line of the Brooks. Brooks Bruins, yeah. Here is Massarelli right back to the pass. Has a man, Ben Taylor, open over the middle of first down. Taylor still on his feet. Taylor inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. And Seacrest, the guy who recovered that fumble, was our player of the game on opening night this year when Bel Air beat St. Clairsville. And this guy right here, Ben Taylor, will get very strong consideration for that distinction here today if Belair goes on and wins because he does so many things for this team and uh, is certainly deserving of recognition for all that he does. This is Massarelli back again over the middle and that's where they're going again to Ben Taylor. So Brook apparently is defending the flanks pretty well, Coach, and is right. giving a little bit of a soft area in the middle to Ben Taylor. What Benny Taylor is doing, he's coming in motion from his uh, from his wide out position, and then he's just coming across the middle, finding the open area between those two inside linebackers. Now, when those two inside linebackers start to become more cognizant of him in the middle, that's going to open up the curl areas about 12 to 15 yards deep. Bel Air second and five. Again at the 18-yard line. Massarelli with time. Taylor open again in the middle. Taylor first down. Inside the 10 and on to the 7-yard line. And I'll tell you, Benny Taylor does such a good job, Georgia, finding the open area. That time he was covered. And uh, Massarelli just waited and, you know, give that offensive line a lot of credit for giving him time to pick out his open receiver and give his receivers time to find the open area. And the same thing again, Taylor just curling up over the middle and finding the soft spot in that defense in front of those uh, inside linebackers. First and goal, Bel Air at the Brooks six-yard line. A little delay to Lacondas, and Lacondas will get inside the five to about the three. Nice recovery that time. It uh, looked like he was uh, going to be able to score, but uh, number 67, I think, was Tim Jones. Uh, did a good job of, uh, of getting to him and bringing him down from behind. Here it is right here. No, that's not Tim Jones. That's number 68 for, uh, for Belair. Or, I'm sorry, for, for Bruin. That's Justin Falcon. A fake. Massarelli, it's a touchdown. Time Massarelli, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bel Air Big Reds finally get on the board with 7.33 showing in the second quarter. Here it is, a fake to Lacondas, and then a little bootleg action over here. They got uh, Belair moving in the wrong direction, and Massarelli was able to find the crack. Dive in for the score, making it Belair 6. Brook nothing. And That's again. 7.33. Uh-oh. Ball kind of got stuck in the mud here is Lednick, the backup quarterback, and he's not going to get there. And Brooke will have to settle for a six to nothing lead. Uh, Bel Air six and Brooke nothing. 
with 7.33 to go. Chris Lednick, the sophomore quarterback, is the holder. <laughs> just can't get it down. He just can't seem to get that thing to uh, stick nose down in the mud. He's going to be a good quarterback here in a couple mm -hmm. of years, but he'll have to wait his turn because Massarelli's going to be around for another year. You saw the speed of Massarelli, too. We talked about this on an earlier telecast. Massarelli is not as shifty, obviously, as Jose Davis and doesn't have all of those uh, nimble little uh, footwork uh, type things. But what he does have is actually greater straightaway speed than uh, uh, did his predecessor at the quarterback position here. And once he gets room to run upfield with daylight, he is fast. And the Brook defenders just found that out as uh, Massarelli went in for the six points to put Bel Air on top. Well, Ted George, uh, you know, you have to give Coach Magistro and his staff a lot of credit because they utilize their talent to the to the best of the ability of their of their talent. They're not asking, you know, their kids to do something that they're not capable of doing, and uh, and as a result of that, that's why they're so successful. And the kick is taken at about the 10 yard line. Good surge by that special team from uh, Brook. They had a nice return. Uh, the kick was down to about the five-yard line to get a return of about 20, uh, 25 yards. And that was number 30 Joey uh, Nichols. for Brook. Joey Nichols on the return and uh, just took it straight up, uh, trying to find a little crack and got it up in decent field position for uh, for Brook. Here it is. The ball was uh, on about the uh, three-yard line. Nice, uh, nice return right here. Some nice blocking and runs with a little bit of power straight up the field. Good field position for Brooke. Um, talk a little bit about the Bel Air special teams here in a second. Uh, on a first down carry, Roberts for some tough yardage and a good effort. Nothing fancy by Brooke. Uh, everything, uh, you know, sort of off tackle and from the tackles to the outside every once in a while. Uh, you know, Coach uh, Billiard will try to pop a, uh, a trap up inside, but, you know, good blocking and uh, good strong inside running. Seven yards. Brooks, seven yards on first down, and I'll tell you, that's a win in any language. Actually, they marked it back. It's second and five at the 37. And now it's going to be third and long because there is the man right there. Bubba Sechrist and company administered a mugging. We'll take a look at it uh, here, George, and trying to come with the, uh, the down-the-line option right here. And look at all the penetration, all the black jerseys that are in that backfield. And, you know, that's the one thing you can't afford to do if you're running the option. You can't afford any penetration by those interior linemen. Secrets grabbed the jersey, and John Keller and company did the rest of the work. Here's the pass. Look at this coverage out here by Chris Lacondas. The ball was completed for short yardage. Sparinger made the reception, uh, make that, um, Sherrick made the reception. And it's gonna be fourth down. I tell you, Lacondas makes such a great break on the ball right here. He's there almost as the ball is there. And, uh, you know, he's playing off the receiver about uh, seven to eight yards, but, you know, recognizes that right away and gets to the receiver very, very quickly. And uh, that's a loss of about, uh, Three, so it's going to bring up fourth and about eight. Jucic, a shorter punt this time, is taken on the run by Matterkoski, and he will return inside the 50 and down to the 41 yard line where it will be a first and 10 for the Bel Air Big Reds. That's a net punt of about nine yards, George, after the return, so uh, good field position for Belair uh, at about the 42 yard line. And uh, so Brooke is really going to have to button her chin straps right here and really suck it up and uh, you know, try to keep Belair out of the end zone. Belair scores here, and uh, it could be the beginning of a wrap. Massarelli again looking over the middle. No route because this is an interception. It was off the hands of the intended receiver and taken out of there by one of the Brook High linebackers. I think that was uh, number 45, Barringer. Todd Sparinger. And a pressure applied by that big fella right there, Louis Owens. Here it is on a replay. Mass Rally back there has time to throw, and the ball just seems to get away from him because it wasn't a very pretty pass. It's off the hands of Lacondas and into the hands of Sparinger. And what a load he is. Look at that. 
So Brooke has new life at its own 45-yard line. First and 10 with 5.17 to go in the first half. George Kellis and Coach Rich Walensky. Nelson Field in Bel Air. Hunter completes the pass to Sparinger out of the backfield. He'll get about four yards. It looked like he was going to go for something after Sparinger made the catch, but again, the great speed of the, you know, the Belair defense is able to get there, and, and what looked like a big play, a possibility of a big play, ends up only a gain of about three yards. Well, from my observations, Coach, this is the best defensive secondary in the Valley this year, and most of them are back. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks that Bel Air lost everything from last year. The one area that they have experienced people is in this defensive secondary. You'll see LaCondas make play after play, almost yeah. had three interceptions in the Edison game. You saw the play he made on the last series, and they've got some people back there that are just good defensive uh, secondary people, which is a crucial and underrated element in high school Absolutely. football. Absolutely. Well, you know, a lot of people don't think, uh, you know, in our area a lot about pass defense, basically because we have so many teams that run around, you know, in, in our area. We're, we're, we're sort of an area that, uh, outside of Belair High School, uh, you know, that puts the ball up as much as they do. But uh, I'll tell you, they have an excellent secondary that not only plays excellent pass defense, but excellent run support, run support as well. And, you know, the guys that we don't mention a lot are their two inside linebackers, number 31, Chaz Call, and number 7, Jeremy Lemley. And those guys are good pass defenders, too, because they run real well laterally to get to the flat areas. Right here, you know, Third you, you can seven. see them. And Nichols takes the short ball. He's got a big opening of first down. I'll tell you, he's going to go. Nichols is going to score. Looky here, Joey Nichols sub substituting for Brian Boyd. It's a sprint out to the right, and they suck everybody over there. They take advantage of that great uh, Belair pursuit. Screen it back here, and you can see right here, Nichols has a clear run down the sideline and shows some real nice speed here, breaking away from uh, that Belair defense and is able to take it in for the score, and now we're gonna have a key extra point here. Well, we were talking about the possibility of a route after uh, the last punt return by Bel Air put them at the Brook 43-yard line. Suddenly, an interception and a 51-yard hookup later, the Bruins are looking to take the lead in this game. And we're gonna have a delay of game penalty, I think, against Brook. I that's what it is. I've got to give Budrow a lot of credit. This team has had all kinds of problems. We're talking about personnel problems. We're talking about injury problems. Uh, they, they had some things happen up there with two players leaving the club this week. Budrow doesn't even want to talk about it. Apparently it was a, a very bizarre situation. And uh, they're fired up out here today to give a good account of themselves. Well, I tell you, you let a team like Brook with great tradition hang around a long time, and I tell you, they're going to they're going to they're going to give you a scare, and they are. I tell you, they're they're putting a scare into Belair right now because they've just taken a seven to six lead. Yep, Ujic administers the extra point. Brook leads seven to six with 4:17 to go, and their people are starting to make some noise as you see the pass from Billy Hunter to Joey Nichols. What happened was they lost contain on the ball. Lacondas got caught on the inside here. A good block. I didn't pick up who the uh, uh, the blocker was, but uh, sealed Lacondas to the inside. Gave Nichols that opportunity to run down the sideline for the score. And we talk about putting a jinx and whammy on people. About the time we talk about uh, the great secondary play, they <laughs> all got right. lost there. <laughs> You're right. In the meantime, that seven points is only the second touchdown scored against Bel Air's first unit defense all year. 7-6, Brook, we'll be right back. Big problem, reminder, a jump. Quarter at Nelson Field, and Brook has just taken a 7-6 lead. Nice kick. Derek Socor on the return. And he is short of the 25-yard line. Belair has put a lot of yardage up in this half, but not a lot of points. That's right. Between uh, between the five-yard lines, they've been really great. You know, they've moved the ball down. They were in scoring position uh, twice before they finally did score. And and weren't able to do it, uh, an attempted field goal, uh, which went awry. And, uh, you know, so you, know, you, lead, you lead, let a team like Brook keep hanging around and hanging around, and they're going to cause you some problems, and that's exactly what they're doing to Belair right now. And they're going to have to go some 75 yards here. Now 
Sorelli with time. Throws it over the middle to Lacondas. And Lacondas is spun down after a nice gain across the 30 to middle, the 32-yard line. Middle screen uh, that time uh, run by, uh, by Belair, number 65. Makes a nice recovery, however. That's Chad Rockhold. Here it is right here, and uh, you can also see the linebacker coming up in there. Uh, number 44 also doing a good job. It's Jeremy Roberts. Over your years of being around this game, have you ever seen a high school program consistently year in and year out execute the passing game the way these guys do? No, I, I really haven't, George. You know, this is this is the big big part of their offense. Socor, the intended receiver, double covered downfield. Now they're going to throw a flag. Wow. It's going to be a pass interference call against uh, against Brooke, and I'm not so sure about this call. Uh, there was a little bit of bumping down there, but it looked like everybody was trying to get to the ball, and uh, I'm sure we'll see it on the replay. You can take a look. Masserali going deep uh, to call down the middle of the field. And here it is right there, and we really don't see uh, you know, where the interference took place. So it's going to be pass interference against uh, Brooke. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, so that'll give Valera first down uh, on about the, their own 46-yard line. Dad, get back to answer your question, George. I've never seen a high school football team, uh, you know, that depends on the pass uh, as much as what Valera does and does it successfully. I've seen teams attempt to do it, you know, from a run-and-shoot offense and so on, but not as successful as what I've seen uh, Valera do it. And this is what happens once they get that's you're right. rushing upfield a little bit too hard as sure. they start getting these draws and things going. And that's the thing. It, it's You rarely see a high school team set up the run Correct. with the pass that's the right. way they're you know the way they doing things. But what you get lulled into doing is, watch this, you got guys rushing upfield trying to get after the quarterback, and they just start to overrun things. And that, that was going to be my next point. You see so many high school teams use the run to set up the pass. Belair is just the opposite. They use the pass to set up the run. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've seen teams, high school teams around, and I've played against them and coached against them, uh, you know, that, that have been in a, in a run-and-shoot offense and so on. But never, you know, have I seen a high school team over the last few years, uh, you know, perform and execute their pass offense and as successful as the You know how right. hard yeah. it is to establish right. a passing game in high school football. And most teams, even when they're successful doing it, They'll struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys just throw one completion That's after, right. and it looks like they're in total command of right. uh, 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 the mastery of the whole scheme. First and 10 at the Brook 44-yard line. Massarelli has a man open far side. This is Matterkoski. This is going to come back for a holding, I believe, because a flag was just thrown, and it hit one of the Bel Air Big Reds offensive linemen in the buns. That was Brian Seacrest. He threw it right at number 58. And uh, I think uh, Belair is going to be called uh, for holding here. So this, this play will be called back to be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, George, which is going to be about six yards from the uh, line of scrimmage. So we're going to tack on 10 yards of that. So it's going to be about a 16-yard penalty. Yeah, and, and uh, you, you may not see the foul right there, but these officials, uh, the fans probably couldn't see that on screen right there. Uh, the only ones that are completing more accurately today than Massarelli would be these officials because the flags have been right on the money. Yep. Whatever, whoever yep. they're flagging is either getting it right in the face mask or right in the backside. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> First and 24. Belair right back to the air. And Ben Taylor's wide open. He's inside the Brook 40-yard line, and right away they pick up about 15, 16 yards. And that time, Taylor found a big opening in the zone. As you will see, it takes a while for the Bruin defenders to close in around them. And, and you know, that's it. You know, it, puts, it, it puts a team, a, a defense football team in a position. What do we do? Do we defend? Do we rush the passer? You know, what do we do? You know, Brooke is trying to uh, ma mix it up a little bit. This time they got a corner blitz coming. And this time they've got Massarelli. So that time, instead of sending only the four down linemen, uh, Coach Billiard mixing it up a little bit, uh, sent six. There's and that the man. the protection broke down a little bit. Phil McMahon with the... Well, it's not a sack, it's a tackle. Third down and six as we see that uh, Massarelli is in trouble. And McMahon makes the stop at the 39. 
Brook in his zone look again. Here comes an inside linebacker. They do pick up the blitz, though. Incomplete. The receiver on the play fell down, and I believe uh, that was number 31. Chaz call. Chaz call. So Bel Air will have to punt the football. Brooks still leads this ball game seven to six, with a minute 27 to go in the first half. Belair's going to take a timeout. Uh, I'm not so sure that they have enough enough people on on the uh, on the field, or maybe Coach uh, Magistro wants to think about uh, you know maybe going for it here instead of uh, kicking the ball away and uh, you know give his uh, defense an opportunity to stuff them. A minute 27 to go in the first half. Brook seven, Bel Air six. We'll be right back. And go for it here on a fourth down play. Massarelli throws. It's caught and it's very close. It is a first down. Ben Taylor made the reception. And that's one smart receiver right there to be aware of where the first down area is. And look at the protection and look at the time that he has to throw here, George. Uh, that time, uh, Brooke decided to defend instead of rush and gave him time, and uh, Ben Taylor was able to find the seam in that zone. And uh, First and 10 at the 31. It's incomplete this time through the hands of Taylor and incomplete. A minute 13, the time remaining in the second quarter. Brooke 7, Bel Air 6. Brooke is not letting those defenders get deep. Uh, you know, behind them, so they're trying to keep everything in front, and uh, those wide receivers and tight end for Belair just running downfield when they see they can't get deep or just curling up, and then Massarelli is trying to thread the needle to him uh, for that intermediate passing game, 12 to 15 yards. Massarelli with bad footing because he's kind of in the uh, slippery area of the football field, completes the ball to Ben Taylor. And big and number 60 uh, in there putting some uh, some heat on him. That's Phil McMahon, 235-pound junior. First and 10, Bel Air at the Bruin 20. The short ball is caught by Matterkoski for short yardage. He'll get a couple yards on the play, and that's all. And there's a timeout now called by the Bruins. No, oh, there's a signaling. timeout yeah. now called by, by, I think both teams were trying to get a timeout yeah. call, and Belair is going to get saddled with it. So and that's the second timeout, I think, for Belair, so they have one more left, George. 54 seconds, and you can see the whole story right there. 54 seconds, 7 6 in favor of Brook. Uh, second down, a ball, uh, nine yards to go. Well, you can see what is developing right here. One of these two teams is going to go off to the locker rooms all fired up. <laughs> if right. Brooke holds them out uh, and, and holds the lead right here, uh, they are going to be a very inspired football team. And obviously, if Bel Air tacks a score on in the final minute of this, uh, after having uh, moved a considerable ways downfield, uh, then they would regain the momentum and go in with uh, some renewed enthusiasm. You know, George, getting back to the passing game of Blair, and, uh, you know, the one thing that you have to mention is the hardest thing to teach an offensive lineman to do is pass block. And, you know, as a result of that, you know, they don't get a lot of help because Belair doesn't do a lot of play action stuff. Most of their stuff is all straight draw back action. And that's the hardest thing to teach offensive linemen to pass block in a, in a straight draw back offense. And these guys do a great job. Short ball here to Lacondas. Lacondas is inside the five yard line. And Massarelli took a shot. He is shaken up. That play only took six seconds. Lacondas wide open out in this flat. Okay, he took a lot of time to find him too, and that's why he took such a shot. And the smart thing is that Lacondas gets out of bounds and stops the clock. And uh, the referee was. Uh, was initially pointed for Massarelli to go to the sideline because he thought he was injured, but Massarelli says, no, 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 I'm okay. I'm going to stay in here. Brooke is trying to get a timeout call, and indeed they will do that. Another element that creates problems for a defense coach, and, and uh, Belair does this probably again as well as anybody. When you play certain teams that run the ball 80% of the time, and, I'm, you know, a lot of times you'll play a team that, say, runs a... a uh, wing tee or something like that mm -hmm. 
what happens is is that the field becomes very small that's, for that's the correct. offense in that's terms correct. of operating room. One thing Bel Air does is it forces a defense to play goal line to goal line and sideline to sideline. I mean, they literally right. stretch the whole defense out all over the field, and when they flood zones with their receivers, you get six and seven guys, the backs out there, the mm -hmm. receivers out there, and they're all over the That's place. Right. I mean, from sideline to sideline. That's right, and it's, and, you know, it, it's a very well-constructed pass offense that Blair has because they do make a team defend the whole field, you know, and, and as you pointed out, and that's a very good observation too, George. And, you know, their receivers are so good, too, at, at recognizing defensive coverage. And it, and it seems like their receivers and the quarterback are constantly on the same page, like they're reading one another. Because all of these are not predetermined routes. What these guys are trying to do, these off, these offensive receivers for Belairs, they're going downfield, and they're trying to find the open area in this zone. And uh, they're doing a great job of doing that. And Masarelli is doing a great job of being able to recognize that as well. But they trail. Seven to six, first and goal at the three yard line. This is Massarelli. Massarelli throws incomplete, intended for Chaz Call. Pretty good coverage that time by the Brook defense. They were able to string that out and not give Massarelli an opportunity really to get his shoulder squared away to the line of scrimmage. And right here, uh, he's just trying to lob the ball into Call and overthrows him. Uh, it would have had to be a, really a perfect pass to get it to him at that particular point. I think that's kind of an option type thing for Massarelli too, that mm -hmm. if they overcommit to the receiver, sure. he's going to run the football. Right. And they've done that so successfully here. Jose was some kind of tough doing it. Here it is. That's the same play that worked for a touchdown earlier, but Massarelli is shoved out of bounds at the one yard line. We're going to take a quick break and come back to conclude the first half. Brooke up by one. Sneak attempt. What do we have here? Massarelli's forward progress is short of the goal line on a sneak. And uh, Bel Air is faced with uh, a big decision right here. It's going to be fourth and goal inside the one-yard line. And this has been the baffling thing about Bel Air is that they, they are not a power team obviously they are definitely a finesse offense and uh, in the open spaces they give you all kinds of trouble but they've had trouble in close quarters today well because the, the field is now shrunk George, exactly you know, right. and 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 if you you know this, this is what i was going to say is that this is where belair has problems when they're down inside the five and uh you know they they have to power the ball in right here you can see Massarelli trying to get the ball in on a quarterback sneak and and is not able to do that. And, and, and by the same token, when you spend so much time with your offensive lineman pass blocking in practice, you get away from the idea of run blocking. So, you know, it's uh, for a running football team, pass blocking is a, uh, is, a, is a disability. For a passing team like Valera, the run blocking becomes a disability. And you're right, they are a finesse football team. They're not a power football team. And this is where it is hurting them. It's fourth and one, and they're going to go ahead and go for it here. And there's 21 seconds left to go in this half. We'll see if Brook can, uh, you know, can hold right here. Well, I tell you, it would be a big shot in the arm to them if they could. And they Massarelli's have. not going to get in. Now it's Matterkoski. Brook's fired up. Well, I tell you, great penetration by that Brook defense. I mean, they got there in a big, big hurry. A and, goal uh, line stand by the green and gold. Four plays from inside the five, and they weren't able able to uh, to convert. And right here, you can see that uh, there's an awful an awful lot of penetration. And then Massarelli sees he stopped. He ladders the ball back to Matterkoski, and great pursuit by that Brook defense. They're able to keep him out of the end zone. Yep. And the Big Reds are just lost when they have to strap yep. it up and run, That's run right. over you. They're more dangerous when they're, they're first down at your 20 You're right. than they are first down at your 3, obviously, as they couldn't get it on four tries from the 3-yard line and two tries from the 1. Inside the 1, I might add. That's going to do it. And I told you, somebody's going off this field all fired up, and it's those guys. Brooks, 7. Bel Air six, despite a huge disparity in total yardage here in the first half. But the only thing that counts is what you see right there. We'll be back with the bands. Field. Mm -hmm. 
Six, Brooke leads Bel Air at halftime back with the Big Reds marching band after these messages. Field uh, with the Brooke Bruins leading seven to six over the Blair Big Reds. And after a sterling halftime performance by the Brook High School band, we now turn our attention to the Blair High School marching band. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of the All-American town, the Big Reds marching band. Now, ladies and gentlemen, featuring the Flag Corps and Don Steele on trumpet, Barefootin'.
And here come the Bruins. Nichols. 26-yard line, and that's about all. Well, it's starting to heat up a little crank bit. Crank up there. here, boys. Yeah. We, we, we got a game on our hands. And, uh, a lot of people didn't think so. But one thing about Brook, even in their worst days, if you arouse them and keep them around long enough, they'll keep you entertained. They'll bite you. And that's what they're doing right now. Nichols gets the call on first down, and he gets short yardage. This first offensive series is going to be important for Brook. Not so much from the standpoint if they can go down and score, but if they can string together uh, you know, a couple first downs, because right now they're believing that they can play with this Belair Big Red team. And uh, right here there's just a, uh, a dive play over the, uh, the right side. And uh, number 52 uh, for uh, Belair, Mike Banning, and we've called his name a lot tonight in on the tackle. Option. Nichols taken out of bounds on the near side of the field by Derek Sokor. And I'll tell you, it looked like that play was going to develop into something pretty nice, George. It looked like they had the uh, the corner uh, blocked very, very uh, well. Watch the speed, though. Watch again, the pursuit. That's right. The pursuit comes down. They play the option pretty good. They take the quarterback, force the pitch. Now look at all these black shirts running toward the ball. And, and right get, there, real nice speed. There quickly, yep. too. Held it to a gain of about five. It's bring up third and about four. And there's a mistake by uh, by that young Brook Bruin offensive line, number 20, Brad Nyman, moving prior to the snap, the tight end on this side of the ball. So that's going to put him in a real precarious third and long situation. I'll tell you, it's mistakes like that that drive coaches to, to their grave early. You're in a third and three, and now all of a sudden uh, you're in a third and an eight. And that changes your whole offensive play calling now. Jeremy Roberts, well short of the first down at the 33-yard line, and the Bruins will bring the punting unit out there. And coming up to uh, make the tackle right there is uh, one of those guys we don't call too often, uh, one of the linebackers, number 31, Chaz Call, coming from his inside linebacker spot. Power coming this way, and it looks again like they have the corner pretty well blocked, but uh, good pursuit by that Belair defense. Uchitz had a good afternoon so far kicking the ball, uh, has, uh, has has done an excellent job of, uh, of keeping uh, Belair on their side of the 50 with his kicks. And there's another good low line drive kick. It's going to be returnable. Tim Marling. Well, I tell you, it was lucky that number 91, or is that 31? I think it's 91 for Brook. Uh, Joe Teeters, five foot six, 157 pound junior, made the tackle because Belair had a nice wall set there, and had uh, that uh, returner been able to, to break that tackle, might have been off for a long return. But good field position for Belair to begin their first drive of the second half on about their own 40-yard line. Cold, steady drizzle falling here. Ben Taylor takes the pass from Massarelli and will get about eight yards. And again, uh, it's Benny Taylor finding the, uh, the, the, the open area in that zone defense. Earlier, he was finding it over the middle, this time a little bit further on the other side of the center. Gain of about eight will bring up second and two. First down, Bel Air Big Reds. It's about an eight-yard gain on uh, that little inside trap that they run so well off of that uh, play action. Lacondas in Brook territory to the 44-yard line. You can see there the lead blocker, Matt Arkoski, coming up, blocking on the linebacker. Gain of about eight, first down, ball at the 46-yard uh, line of Brook. Complete What an interception. Wow. What a nice play and what a nice concentration on the ball Ryan by number Sherrick. eight, Ryan Sherrick. If I'm not mistaken, didn't he start the year as their starting quarterback, uh, George, and then uh, moved him to a wide receiver? 
Here it is right here. It's going to be off of uh, Taylor's hand. And look at the concentration and the great ball control by Sherrick right there for the interception. And the anxiety continues to grow as Bel Air is frustrated once again. Looked like they had it moving. Bel Air finds a way to get out of trouble. And here they come with Joey Nichols to the 35 yard line. And uh, Brooke leading seven to six with 9.15 to go in the third quarter. We've got a ways to go and there will be a lot of things that'll happen. But if nothing else, the longer Brooke hangs around, the more pressure that puts on Bel Air. And sometimes when you're a pressured team, you're not out there just relaxing and having things your way as they've had much of this season. You never know how you're going to respond. That's right. Especially on a muddy option. field. Ball down on the ground, and Nichols covers up for a loss back to the 30-yard line. I tell you, that was a wild, well-designed play. They, they did have the corner. They had some nice blocking over here. But, uh, you know, this is a dangerous offense. Here's the pitch, and it just not able to handle by uh, Nichols. And did the smart thing of, you know, instead of trying to pick it up, uh, just fell on the ball, maintained possession for Brooke. It's going to bring up a third and about 12. And this plays into Bel Air's hands again with all of those veteran defensive backs. Billy Hunter, who has been kind of quiet in the passing game, airs one downfield. It is caught brilliantly by Jeremy Robert. Wow. Tell you what a catch. Two great catches by, by Brook. Uh, one for the interception that uh, gave them possession. And then another great catch right here by Jeremy Roberts running a uh, post pattern down the middle. And here's the ball. It looks like it's going to be overthrown. And he goes up with one hand and makes the catch for the, uh, for the big gain. On the coverage, Grant Allen, he was there. He just, uh, well, Roberts just made the play. Sure and that's did. the thing. Brooke this year has not been making plays today. They're making them. Jeremy, Jeremy Roberts is drilled by Ben Taylor. Okay, Benny Taylor, Benny Taylor is playing a, a defensive position to where all he is doing is mirroring the ball. Wherever the ball is going, that's where Benny Taylor is going. Here it is right here. You're going to see him just come out of nowhere right here. Here he is. Boom. Right there it comes from. It, it's not a free safety, George. He's playing about four yards beside and behind those inside linebackers, and he's just mirroring the ball and running to the ball. Over the last 20 years, Bel Air's had about four or five great defensive players, and he's one of them. Lance Melsnape comes to mind. Pass pass intended for number 44, Robert. Jeremy Roberts. Certainly. Richie Mamie last year, who broke all of the tackling records. But as Division I prospects go, at least on the defensive side of the football, Taylor might be the best prospect they have had since Lance Mel. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether we can get a shot of that when uh, Belair gets into their uh, their defense, uh, you know, to see where uh, where he's playing, but uh, just not wide enough yet. If we could just get a little bit deeper there, we'll see where he's. But there he is, right there. You can see the two inside linebackers. It's a defensive back, and he's just mirroring the ball. And there's the screen trying to set up. They had a lot of success with it in the first half. As a matter of fact, went and scored their first touchdown with it, but uh, this time the ball is slightly overthrown. And There's big number pressure, two, big ben pressure Taylor. applied yeah. to Billy Hunter by Bel Air, and uh, Hunter overthrew Joey Nichols in the screen. So that's a play that worked for uh, the touchdown in the first half, but Bel Air was waiting this time, and the Bruins keep getting a little bit uh, of elbow room here as far as field position you're goes. right george and that right now it is a game of field position and they're going to have a nice advantage in field position on this punt Yucic, low line drive picked up by matter koski and he's finally taken out of bounds on the near side of the field at about the 18 yard line brooks still in front seven to six 657 to go in the third back in a minute Massarelli. Surrounded by white shirts. And Brooke is picking it up defensively here. They lead seven to six. And you can just feel the synergy in the Bruin football team with each passing minute for a first down. 
I tell you, this this is what Benny Taylor does for this football team, George. That time he came in motion, came across the middle. They've been hitting him across. Clint Lacondas. Right here, they just push everybody off. Those linebackers get those deep drops, and then Lacondas comes out of the backfield uh, in front of the linebackers. And a little jump off right here. For the linebackers That's right, right here, he outruns Sparinger, maintains his footing. And then stiff arms a man ahead for an additional five yards, first and 10 at the 25. Lacondas down to the 21. He'll get about four more. It's the lead draw again uh, to Lacondas with Matikoski, the lead blocker. And all those linemen are trying to do is turn those defensive tackles out and then Matikoski attacks the linebacker on that side. Here it is right here. You can see the block by uh, number 58 uh, for Belair. That's, That's uh, uh, Seacrest. Yeah, does a nice job. But the linebacker from uh, the inside came and made the tackle. Lacondas in motion. Massarelli under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Back at the 30-yard line, and that is... And Massarelli looks like he's hurt. A sack. Jucic. Applying the defensive pressure, that is his second sack. And again, we saw this in the first half. He comes through unblocked on a blitz from the outside. And Belair better do a better job of picking that up because he is wreaking havoc as we get our third check for a sack. Kroger donates now $150 to the OVAC. I'll what? tell you, George, when Belair ends up in that one-back offense where they send their one back in, in motion, what Brooke is doing is they're, they're sending both corner linebackers, and there's just not enough guys there to pick up all of the people that Brooke are, is sending when they're in that single-back offense. Lednick is in at quarterback, the sophomore, for at least one play. As uh, Massarelli was shaken up, Lednick cannot handle the snap. Belair is backing up. Well, it's going to be a fourth down. And it's going to be fourth and long. There it is right here, and a quarterback coming you know, off the bench cold uh, is not able to handle it. And uh, Massarelli back in there, and uh, they're inside uh, Brooks 35. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and about 17, or maybe closer to, to 12, 19. I would call this the first relevant moment in this football game. Massarelli throws, broken up brilliantly by the Brooks secondary, and it is Ryan Sherrick on the coverage. The Bruins will have the football with 3.50 to go in the third quarter. They lead 7-6. We'll be right back. She raised her family. Brooke offense. And Taylor makes the stop. The ball carrier on the play, Joey Nichols. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, the red zone's been the dead zone for the big reds because they are, I don't have official statistics, but they are piling up all kinds oh, heavens, of yes. yardage. Uh, uh, yeah, going from their own 18 all the way to the 25 and doing it with absolutely no difficulty. Then all of a sudden, and it's just, like somebody throws yep. up a big iron screen. Nichols again the ball carrier. Nichols is close to a first down. And Brooke is starting to make some things work on the Three ground days. game here. And that's okay. what happens. You start to get a latter stages of the ball game, you start to work your defense over a little bit. I tell you, Banning uh, came from his defensive end position on that side, almost caught it from the outside, but uh, Nichols uh, showed some a nice burst of speed and was able to run just straight ahead north and south for some real good positive yardage. There's Banning right there, gets a hand on him, but not enough to stop him. And at uh, number two, then Taylor has to make the, uh, make the tackle. Third and short. And this is going to be close. Real close. Sparinger, the fullback, and will have to have a measurement, I'm sure. But you know, you've got to give Brooke a lot of credit. I mean, they came in here an underdog, which really should never be, considering they're a Division I size school and Bel Air is a Division IV size school. But uh, given the personnel that the two teams have, uh, Bel Air is, uh, by consensus, the team with the better personnel mm -hmm. this year. And Brooke has been decimated by all kinds of problems. I mean, it, a lot of adversity. This is not even the shadow of uh, 
Coach Bill Brooks, Bill best Bill overall decision. personnel, at least uh, at face value. These, these kids that are out here, though, are giving a pretty good account of themselves, and Brooks got a fourth down, and they want to talk about it. Won't this be interesting? What do you got to lose? You're, you're three and four. Nobody's expecting you to be here anyway. You're, you're, you're an underdog here. You have virtually no chance of going to the postseason. You win this game, you may recover and get at least a 500 out of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe even a winning season if uh, you, you can catch some fire down the stretch. Although, I'm sure the Bruins will have some difficulty with Youngstown Cheney. They do have North Marion coming up, a team that I certainly am never fearful of when I get on a field with them. Anyway, uh, you can turn what everybody was looking at a three and seven here coming into this week, maybe into a five and sure. five or six sure. and four. You know, what do you do right here? And I'll tell you, you know, he, like you said, George, he really has nothing to lose, and I think Coach Billiard will go for it here. He's got fourth and less than a yard. And, uh, you know, if he can maintain possession here, uh, you know, run some additional time off the clock, that will put that Belair offense into a, uh, a a feeling of urgency. Yes. Uh, and when you're in that particular mode, you have a tendency to make mistakes. Well, anytime you have a chance to retain possession of the football and not put it in the hands of the Belair offense, you might want to take a shot. Quarterback sneak. I think that's a first down and a whole lot more by Billy Hunter. That is a really opportunistic call and the right one in that situation when you're three and four. And this is a nice surge by that offensive line. You know, they've got those people moving backwards and here's Billy Hunter comes out of the crowd and uh, gets the first down. So Brooke is uh, first and 10 from inside their own 50-yard uh, line at about the 48. So, you know, they're moving right now. they got about four or five yards out of that. Here's Nichols. Nichols slips a tackle upside and gets about four. That's a gain of about three, George, so it's going to bring up second and seven. And uh, it looked like it was going to go for more yardage than that. But again, you know, uh, nice movement by the, uh, by the uh, defensive front of uh, Belair. And there's Benny Taylor making the tackle again from that little spy position that he's playing. And the rain starts to come down a little bit harder now, which is a factor. The pitch is... Diagnosed wow. by Ben Taylor. Wow. As Joey Nichols, I think if he can corral that football initially, would have had a better chance of gaining some yardage. But once uh, the it, there was the bobble in these wet conditions, Taylor wasn't wasting any time. Tell you, you got to give you got to give Benny Taylor a, a lot of credit. Watch how he plays this, George. There's a lead blocker in there, right here, and Benny Taylor is going to play everything with his inside arm and shoulder. Come off of that block and boom, make the tackle. It's great defensive play. There's you know, nothing you can say about that. It's a well-designed play offensively and a good defensive play, and it was going to take a good defensive play to stop that. Third down, or rather second. No, it is third down. And this Whoa! is trouble for Bel Air. Taylor is going to go all the way over and make that tackle, but the throwback pass works very effectively for the Brook Bruins. And uh, Ryan Sherrick, tur quarterback turned receiver. First down. Watch the block, the watch the block by number 60. Phil McMahon right here. Watch this, George on Lacondas. Boom, there's a pin. And then he comes off of that and gets another one. And that's what springs him. I told you, you know, for McMahon a big, big is game. a football player. And he's going to be the cornerstone of their interior lines in 1997. First and 10, Brook at the Bel Air 33 with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Jeremy Roberts works the left side. And all of a sudden, a Brook team, which looked absolutely nothing like a Brook team for most of this season, looks like a Brook team. The effort is there. The second effort is there. And now, the fourth quarter thing, and they're starting to believe as they yep, come off. Sure are. And time runs down to zero at the end of three. The Bruins believe. Who to thunk it? That it going into the fourth quarter, Belair would only have six points on the scoreboard. And, and even more unbelievable to a lot of people would be that Brooke has seven. And how about 
possibility that they could get some more. They're at the 33 with a second and seven at the end of three. Brooks seven, Bel Air six. The ball, second and seven at the Bel Air 25 yard line. Joey Nichols up the middle. That and time he, he ran into his own uh, blocker, uh, number 45, uh, the lead blocker for Brook uh, on that blast play over the right side. Uh, that's Todd Sparinger. He ran into the back of him and uh, right there trying to block on a linebacker. A short gain of maybe about three is going to bring up third and five. And Brook, no doubt, is in four down territory, so they've got two downs to make five yards. They're going to be short. Won't get the first down. He'll be about a yard short again. And this is a telltale moment right here because Bel Air needs to get the ball back. They sure do. Somebody's running the football on you and moving the sticks. All of a sudden, you look up at the clock, and there's just not that much left. Absolutely, George. Todd Ucic uh, comes in at the... Uh, one of the wide receiver spots right here. It's going to be fourth and about two... Option. The, the option. Nichols gets loose. He's got the first down. Okay, I don't know. effort got him very, very close to the first down. Allen on the stop for the big red. They're going to bring it in. I'll tell you, this is going to be a key measurement right here. Randy option into the split end side of the field. This is turning into somewhat of a nightmare weekend for Belmont County. Uh, we came into this weekend thinking about the possibility that Bridgeport, Martins Ferry, and Bel Air, look at that, short by wow. that. And the Bel Air Big Reds have the football and the Bruins are stunned. I think they thought they had the yardage necessary for well, the I first you, I, th I think Bel Air got a very favorable spot on that ball too, George. And, uh, you know, it was just a Nats eyelash, eyelash short of being a first down. And uh, Belair takes over inside Still, their own 20-yard line. They've they, got a long way to go. They've got to go 79 yards. The difference in this game right now is a mixed, missed extra point early. Lacondas will get about three. But we were talking about uh, Martins very undefeated coming into this weekend, suffered a huge upset loss at Indian Valley. Bridgeport is going to go down to the last week fighting for their playoff lives, perhaps in need of a 10-0 to get there. And Bel Air, which was in cruise control coming into this game, 24 points sitting out on the table right here that Brooke would provide them. Oh, oh. my goodness! Intercepted by Brad Nyman! And Nyman was wide open. That looked like one of those Neil O'Donnell passes in the Super Bowl last year, George. He just threw it right into Nyman's hands. D didn't see any re any receiver around there. Here it is right here. And uh, there's only two white jerseys that's there. That's right. And I don't know uh, what uh, you know, Ty Masarelli was seeing, but uh, there were two defenders right there, and one of them uh, caught the ball for Brooke and put them into great field position, first and 10 from about the 20 yard line of Belair. Now Brooke with an opportunity to make life very, very miserable. If they would happen to score and kick an extra point, then you know Belair would be in a period of desperation down the stretch here. Joey Nichols. Lacondas gets the tackle, and I'll tell you what, the Brook running backs are running very hard. And on that particular play, Beller did a nice job defensively. They sure did. They had some nice penetration, forced Nichols to bounce it to the outside. But there he, you know, makes somebody miss and uh, running very, very hard. And uh, it's a real short gain of about uh, maybe a yard, George. But in the first half, early in the first half, that would probably would have been a loss. The pass is complete. Sparinger made the reception. 
And he is tackled at the 17-yard line. Here it is right here, a little bootleg action. Fullback coming out of the backfield. The ball is slightly underthrown, and Sparinger has to go down for it. And, George, you know, the, the camera isn't picking it up because they're following the action. But I'll tell you, uh, you know, Hunter really took a shot there. And Massarelli has taken some shots, too, in this ball game from uh, those defensive players from Brook. And Hunter is taking some shots also. Third and seven. Big defensive effort again by the Bel Air Big Reds. They're in four down territory are the Bruins right here, and I don't believe they'll be trying any field goals from right there. Mike Bannon got underneath his block, was able to jam things up, and uh, reached up with a hand and made the tackle for uh, no gain or loss. Here it is right here. Does a nice job getting under that blocker's pads and just jams everything up, forces the ball carrier to the outside, and then the rest of that Bel Air uh, defensive front gets to the ball carrier. Fourth and, and nine. nine, and Belair better have the antidote right here. They set up the screen. The pass is broken up brilliantly. Almost intercepted. And almost intercepted indeed by Bubba Sechrist. Belair will have the football trailing seven to six with 8.18 to play when we return to Soggy Nelson Field. Executive plays by Jeremy Lemley, Mike Bannock, and right there by Bubba Sechrist, and Belair at least turns back Brooks' opportunity to add additional points to their 7-6 to six lead. Now we get a timeout on the field called as uh, Belair was trying to step in offensively right here. Well, okay, I think they were one player short, George. That's why they had to call the timeout and get over to uh, the sideline. Bill Cower show coming up later on this morning at 11.30 a.m. NFL on NBC, a one-hour pregame followed by the Miami Dolphins at the Philadelphia Eagles. And then for your dinner, faced the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Houston Oilers. Well, this is certainly not the ideal field conditions uh, for any kind of an offense, particularly one that likes to air it out. Bel Air had difficulties here on a rainy afternoon a couple of weeks back against a, a clearly outmanned Cambridge team. Struggled to an 18-0 win. Now let's see what they can do. The short pass is caught yes, nicely by oh, Matter Koski. And you got to give Matter Koski credit right there for reaching way down and out and making that uh, grab right there for a gain of nine. I tell you, Belair doesn't need to panic. They have an awful lot of time. They have over eight minutes. And, uh, you know, they can nickel and dime you to death, and then all of a sudden, boom, hit you with a big, long gainer. And that time, uh, just a little dump off to Matter Koski coming out of the backfield. The delay, and again, it is as it has been so many times, Lacondas. First down, Belair. Seven minutes and 42 seconds. Are my eyes counting. deceiving me, or is that a few flakes falling with that rain right now, Jay? It's cold enough. There's some sleety stuff, and you notice the players have been kind of skating around yep. out on the grass here. To get into the muddy areas, it'll really be looking like uh, the Naylor hockey game. Better Koski to the outside. Better Koski is very close to another first down out over the 40-yard line. Richie Matterkoski. Both of these teams are going to have a lot of good skilled people returning next year. Matterkoski, one of those for the Bel Air Big Reds. Massarelli will be back. Massarelli looking downfield, keeps everything covered, and just dumps it here to, uh, to Massarelli or to uh, Matterkoski, and uh, is able to get uh, close to the first down marker. It's going to uh, require a measurement here, so. Uh, we'll see if they got the first down on their first offensive play of this new series of downs. George Kellis and Coach Rich Walensky from Nelson Field. It is Bel Air, seven, uh, Bel Air trailing Brook 7-6 to six with 7.09 to go in this football game. Don't forget, next Friday night, you get to see this. Caddis at Union Local. The Caddis Cardinals in desperation to try to keep their playoff hopes alive. And... The very, very tough Union Local Jets. They are rivals, and that will be a good one. Second down and one. 
Bel Air has been fortunate uh, that they've been getting pretty good yardage on first down. They got nine on uh, the previous sequence. They have nine yards right here, so sometimes that last yard's been their toughest one in this game. The one right at the end of the first half is certainly the difference right here. Now we're getting uh, Budrow out on the field, John, about something. And I don't know what it is, but he's been out on the field ever since they called for the measurement. And he wants the uh, referee to come over and give him uh, some type of a of an interpretation of something. And a lot of the Bel Air fans over here politely inviting him to Absolutely, yes. exit the field. Yes. 7.09 to go. If you weren't here, then I can tell you it was miserable. If you were here, I don't need to tell you that. Now John Magistro. It's going to just cost him a timeout. It's just uh, showing his uh, hospitality there at Nelson Field. And, uh, Budrow, it. kind of a master of psychological games, and uh, he's trying to uh, apparently rattle the opposition. John Magistro just going out there to make sure his guys have their heads on straight. Well, I don't know what all the fuss is. It's second and one at the 41 yard line. Matterkoski first down, and he is chased down in front of the Bel Air bench at about the 46, a gain of about five yards on the play. Good job by Matterkoski to uh, slip to the outside. Mm -hmm. Everything jammed up inside. Uh, Brook defensive front four doing a good job of jamming everything in, and then he's able to bounce it to the outside and use a little bit of that speed that he has to get the first down. Seekers threw two block. blocks on that play that were both valuable in the scheme of things. Massarelli looking for Ben Taylor. That yeah. is definitely pass interference. Absolutely. Taylor was bumped before the ball arrived. Okay. Probably would have made the reception had he not been uh, uh, bumped from behind. And I don't think you're going to get much of an argument even from the Bruins staff on that one. I tell you, Massarelli is really taking a beating, George. He, you know, he gets the ball off, but as soon as he gets the ball off, I mean, he is being smacked by that Belair or by that Bruin defense. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Six. 59 to go. Here's another look at there it. it is clearly, uh, you will see. He's waiting, waiting, waiting for somebody to throw. He and gets there it drilled. Is. And then he gets drilled. And uh, you saw that Taylor had been directed off the path of the ball before it had arrived. Now it's Lacondas with the inside draw. And Brooke is doing a good job at uh, preventing this. They're going to say that forward progress, <laughs> the Bruin fans would love to call that uh, a takeaway right there. Phil McMahon stole the ball from Lacondas, and there's a flag. That's going to cost Brooke 15 yards, and it's going to be on their bench. Oh, uh, that this is not good for the Bruins. I mean, they've got to maintain their there's composure. There's two out there. The second one came uh, just a few seconds after the... Uh, Head linesman through his. That's a dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct on the bench. Oh! Dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct on, on the, the team. Bruins. Oh my What's Lord. this mean? How much yardage are they going to mark off here? Well, I'll tell you, George, they're going to march 15 for sure, then I think they're going to march another 15. Oh, wow. Because they're two separate penalties. They're both dead ball, and I think they have to penalize them both. They have to enforce both. Any penalties. way you look at it, if that's the case, that ain't shooting yourself in a foot. That's blowing the whole thing off with a Gatlin gun. Okay, there's the first 15-yard penalty on Sports of My Conduct against them. Now that takes it down to inside the 30-yard line. So if there is another penalty tacked on to that. Yep, there and it is. Now that's half the distance to the goal line. You're right, George. This is unbelievable! Here's the play. Uh, we're going to see it, and this is the one that causes all the controversy and uh, causes Brooke to get into trouble. It's Lacondas right here. Now, evidently, the ball is blown dead, and here comes McMahon out of the, paw, out of the pile with the ball, and uh, 
Right well, there, it's blown dead, well, and that's what all the confusion was about. Save that replay, fellas, if you could, because I'd like to talk about that. Here is Lacondas. Lacondas trying to get up inside the five-yard line. This penalty sequence took the ball all the way to the 12. Now Lacondas gets seven more. Now, let me ask you your opinion. Now, obviously, the whistle blew. Right. And they ruled that the forward progress, and we'll see. In your opinion, right there. No, I don't think the, I don't think the forward, the, he's still trying to get yardage. He's still on his feet, and if it was a whistle, it was a darn quick one, George. So you think that McMahon had a right to the I football? I think he had a right to the football. Not only a right to the football, but he had a right to return it. All right. Uh, I can see an argument both ways on that. In any event, the Bruins are fighting hard inside the five-yard line, and here they are again, very, very close, but well, not in yet. Timeout. This should be a first down, George, so they've got four pops at it from uh, inside the one-yard line. That was Matarkoski taking it down near the one. And this is where they got into trouble the last time. They were not able to punch it in uh, from, you know, this inside the five-yard line. They've take, been down yeah. here. This is the fourth time that they've that. been down Look, here. Look, there it is. And take nothing for granted, Big Reds fans, please. First and goal at the one. 5.35 to go in the football game. They're not going to get in again on the Now they finally get in. Oh, my. Okay, it's hard to tell now, from wait, this now angle. Here's what I got to ask the question. You're talking about forward progress this time. <laughs> You're right. You know, you know and I'm, I'm not arguing either way for this. I'm just saying, where is Ty stopped right here? What if somebody grabs a football out of his hands while he's making a second effort? No whistle is blown. Apparently, he's in the end zone at some point right here. Anyway, you cut it. It's a Bel Air touchdown. We're back here for the two-point conversion. And it's intercepted by Sparinger. So I'm sure this game will be dissected very, very carefully You're by right. the fans of both teams and the, the coaching staffs. But... The players have no control over what's called on the field. This has been a very inspired, well-played game, and I take my hat off to both teams. Bel Air leads 12-7. We still got five and a half to go. Twelve seven. Bel Air has regained the lead, and Brooke will have pretty decent field position here, out across their own 35-yard line. Don't count them out just yet because, Coach, as you know, defenses get tired. You get sure one do. breakdown, yep. a pass, a guy slips in these conditions. Next thing you know, you're upfield for about 60 yards. I saw that last night, Wheeling Park and Oak Glen. Boy, they were slip-slopping around on there, and there were some big plays. Sure it was. Some pretty sh uh, shoddy turf situation right there. First and 10 at the 36. A lot of time yet uh, for Brooke. They don't need to panic. Uh, just, you know, keep... Uh, just keep on doing your game plan as you had, as you had in there. Hunter's going to throw. And it's picked off by Ben Taylor. And you just called it, Coach. What was the hurry to get five and a half minutes? I tell you, Benny Taylor has had a tremendous game, a huge game. I don't care if he doesn't play another down. That, you got this downstairs in the truck. Write his name in for Bel Air. We're going to pick two players of the game. Write him in. Okay, he does a great job from that little spy position, moving with the ball, and has to go way up to make the interception. And I'll tell you, right there, puts Belair in great field position inside the 45-yard line of Brook. They've got a wall of fame here for all their great players over the years. His portrait ought to be just about ready. This is Matter Koski. Matter Koski to about the 40-yard line, and I, I actually had a feeling the Bruins were going to come out. They had, they'd been running the ball pretty hard and uh, to try to at least get some yardage on first and second down right there. I was a little bit surprised that they went went up top right away, but uh, one thing about Bel Air's secondary, if you keep trying to keep trying to hum it over the top, eventually one of those guys is going to stick a paw up there and take it away. Second down and seven here for Bel Air at the Brook 41-yard line. Belair needs to run some time off the clock, and the, again, George, their lack of a real strong running game is uh, is, is a real problem. Matter Koski running hard and gets pretty good yardage out of this. And again, they're running into big piles of defenders. Finally, the whistle blows. 
I'm just waiting for somebody to steal one out of the hands here, <laughs> and then all you know what's going to break loose. Here's a look right here, and that's Matt Okoski over the right side, and uh, I'll tell you that Blair, or Bruin defense really doing a good job, uh, you know, stacking up to run inside. It's going to bring up a third and about uh, four uh, for Belair inside the 40-yard line of Brook. And under four minutes to play. Bel Air leads 12 to seven. George Kellis and coach Rich Walensky on a sleeting afternoon. The delay again to Lacondas. He Ooh. is buried over there. Number 44. And that is Jeremy Roberts. Did a great job of getting to the ball. Uh, got him low and somebody came up and really leveled him. Here it is right here. Lacondas trying to bounce it to the outside. And uh, there's number 44 Ooh, coming up, the and then second a big hit, hit on the, on the second scene hit. is uh, the one that administered the rude hit, and that may have been Jucic. Jucic has uh, had a pretty fine game here. He's got punts over the head, two sacks, some big hits. I like his performance. Yeah, he's had a great game. Maybe that was Nyman that got, I don't know, somebody over there made the hit, but there are a lot of guys playing well on both sides of the ball, and now here's a penalty marker for a delay a game against Bel Air. going to make it fourth and nine. It was indeed Nyman that came up and smacked Lacondas. Okay, Two be minutes a five and yard 54 penalty. seconds to go. Now, what do you do? You've got an outstanding punter in Ben Taylor, but you better not get one blocked right here either. So Benny got to make sure that he does the right thing, and uh, if need be, eat the football. Would I fake? That's a question coming from the truck. No, I wouldn't do that. I would. High snap. Taylor will get the kick away. It's not a good one. And it goes out of bounds. Yeah, okay. That's it's, not a bad one. Well, wait a minute. They're going to line it up here now. It's about the 20-yard line. Good as a touchback. We'll be back. On a first down play, the Bruins go to the run and pick up six. Out to the 26. And we'll get another look at it. Uh, that is Nichols, Benny who has Taylor done a right real here. fine job here today. Replacing the injured Brian Boyd. Second down and four. Billy Hunter, he airs it out. It is incomplete and almost, well, let's say at least off the fingertips of the defender, Grant Allen. Ryan Sherrick, the intended receiver. And uh, they were airing it out, trying to go deep to Sherrick down, uh, down the sideline. And uh, incomplete. So it's going to bring up a third and four. Now this is it for Brook. Uh, they, they need to maintain possession. They need a first down. And uh, they need four yards. And I'm sure that if they don't make it on third down, they'll go for it on fourth. They have nothing to lose being down 12 to seven at this point. Penalty marker, now what? If this is a delay game, the Bruins are really gonna be sick. Because they're gonna be looking at third and nine. And yeah, we're gonna see what the call is here. Usually the delay game is called by the back judge, but uh, he did not throw the flag. We're going to see what the uh, illegal substitution against Brook. What usually happens in a situation like that, George, is that they have a bunch of guys, they have 11 guys in the huddle. Yes. They call a play. Then one guy comes out and another one comes on, and that ends up as being an Ill illegal substitution. I've seen that called more this year than uh, ever yeah, before. Yeah, me too. We had a call in the game uh, last night between uh, Indian Creek and Edison, an illegal substitution well, call. Well, you got to see a couple of dandies oh, this yeah. weekend. Oh, sure yeah, sure did. Pal. Sure did. So uh, third down. <laughs> and 10. Ball back at the 21-yard line. Single back offense for Brook. Yeah! Pressure's coming. Hunter gets away from a mob and then is tackled. And good, good defensive stay-at-home efforts right there by Bel Air because uh, they could have overreacted to that. John Keller. Jeremy Lemley, number seven, was in on the hit for, uh, for Brook. 
or I'm sorry, for Belair. You can see several Belair defenders get trapped in the backfield, but you're right. Lemley gets up there, Seacrest gets up there. Those are the two guys that made it happen. And great coverage by the secondary of Belair as well. So Brooke looking at fourth and nine, and with a minute 28 to go, I think it's fair to say that uh, they got to make it happen on this play. And they need uh, they need nine yards. Uh, the main thing is they don't need a touchdown on this play, George. What they need is nine yards, so their receivers need to know where the first down marker is and make sure that they get past that marker so that they can maintain possession. Belair scored first on a short keeper by quarterback Ty Massarelli, the point after failed. Then the Bruins came back and executed a brilliant uh, short pass to Nichols, and Nichols went the distance for the Bruin touchdown. The point after made it seven to six. Now, as we look at it, the rain is coming down real hard. And uh, it remains seven to six, Brook, until the fourth quarter, and finally, uh, Bel Air with the aid of two back-to-back -back unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, one against the Bruin bench and one against the Bruin players, uh, so, uh, nearly 30 yards uh, in total markoffs, set Bel Air up for the go-ahead touchdown, and go-ahead they did on another one-yard sneak uh, by Massarelli. But neither of the two scores were easy. The yardage has been easy to come by for Bel Air, but the touchdowns have not been. A minute 28. And I'll bet you that there are a lot of happy Bel Air fans that somebody that built this joint about 60 years ago thought enough of the home side to put a roof over top <laughs> of it. There ain't too many places with a roof overhead. Uh, this one and the one of Martin's Ferry. Ferry are the only two I can think of. Bridgeport does have, uh, yeah, that's right. Seems like the Belmont the, County School. Yeah, the three we're talking about. Yeah. They've got another ball in there. It's one of those rubber ones, so, uh, you know, Hunter can get a good, a good grip on it. A shot puts it over the head. And a penalty marker. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. There's going to be a flag on number three, I think, on Derek Sokor. Sokar. And I think it's pass going to be a pass interference. interference. And the Bruins, who appeared to be dead on a pass that had no chance, I don't think. They're going to be a mark off of 15 here, and the Bruins will have life everlasting with a first down. Here it is right here. It's kind of hard to tell, uh, you know, because Sokar is down there uh, behind the... Uh, behind the uh, we receiver. We apologize for the uh, foggy lens, but uh, please bear with us. You can understand it is ugly out here. I didn't see it, so uh, the interference had to occur early. Okay. And uh, First and ten, Brooke at its own 36-yard line with a minute nine. Hunter chased out of the pocket. Ooh! And another flag is down as Hunter was nailed from behind. It's going to be roughing the passer, I'm sure. The intended receiver on the play for the Brook Bruins was Phil Soley, and the Bruins have not gone his way. He's been their uh, most reliable receiver uh, for most of this season. And this is one of the few times they've gone to Soley. And you can see that the, the ball is almost intercepted. But anyway, you cut this. There's a roughing the passer penalty, and now all kind of 15-yard penalties are going the other way. And there is a look at Hunter, and there is someone arriving after the fact. First and 10. Brooke, there's a, still a minute two left in this thing, and it ain't over till it's over, boys. And they're at midfield. They were fourth and nine, George, and uh, got a, uh, a pass interference call that uh, helped them maintain possession. And then a almost a near interception by Benny Taylor here, and then a roughing the passer penalty, and an additional 15-yard penalty has placed the ball on the Blair side of the 50-yard line. So I'm sure Coach Magistro is over there talking to his Blair Big Red, saying, you know, let's not make any stupid mistakes here. Let's just play good, solid defense. You know, try to keep Hunter in the pocket. You know, play your zones, 
and don't give away anything deep. A look at the Bruin congregation. A minute two. <coughs> Bel Air 12. Brook 7. George Kellis and Coach Rich Walensky at Nelson Field in Bel Air. It's clean shirts in there for, uh, for Brook. Number 88 is, is in at one of the receiver positions. That's uh, Gary Morris, 6'4", 170 pound uh, receiver. Single back offense again. Caught, and I think it's another first down. Soli made the reception at the 39 yard line. And that will stop the clock until they have a chance to uh, move the chains, and uh, they are moving them. And, All of uh, a sudden, Hunter is uh, finding the mark. It's down inside the 40 yard line at about the 39, 38 yard line. Hunter under a rush, gets away from Seacrest. But doesn't get away from Benny Taylor, holds it to a gain of maybe three yards, George, and more, most importantly, the clock keeps moving. Well, they're trying to get a timeout called down here. I don't know how many they have left. They finally get the timeout called with 31 seconds. The gain on the play is to the 34-yard line. Here it is, good pressure from the backside. That's uh, Seacrest. Yeah, 58, Seacrest. And uh, right there, Hunter is able to find some open area on the uh, the backside. And uh, but I'll tell you, Benny Taylor comes up, makes a big, big hit, keeps him in the field to play. For after a short gain of about three, he's going to bring up second and seven. But down the distance right now is not real, real important. There's there you see the clock, George. Looking over the head, it's 12-7 Bel Air. Second down and seven. Brook, those guys right there with the ball on the Bel Air 36-yard line, and. Uh, to pick players of the game, as we told uh, told you a few minutes ago, Ben Taylor's already been penciled in. So we're trying to figure out who the uh, key Bruin is here. I tell you, Nichols has had a nice game. Uh, Hunter's had a nice game. Uh, several of those defensive uh, linemen have had good days. Roberts ha has had a good game. So we'll get one here in a little bit. This is there's a pressure Secret again. throws him down for a sack. And the Bruins are really running short of time now. They better ground the football, and the ball boy better get off the field. Incomplete with eight seconds to go, and now they'll have to throw to the end zone. I'm sure, well, it's fourth down, George, and they, I was they afraid have to go for deep. I was afraid for that ball boy going to get steamrolled once the ball was in play. All right, so Brook will have one more shot at this. And what Bel Air is going to be thinking here is let's get everybody deep and let's be batting the ball down in the secondary. That's about right, George. This is it. Any way you cut it. Fourth and 12. Hunter unloads. It's intercepted. It was almost caught. Lacondas made the interception. There is no time left. And these two football teams have left their hearts, souls, blood, and guts on the field for us here today. I tell you, we're going to have to pick a most valuable player for Brook, and, and my vote's going to go to their quarterback because I think he gave a valiant effort, George. And... Uh, that, of course, is, is number 11, Billy Hunter. But I'm not so going to argue guys. with you, Coach. You've been uh, you've been around this game a lot longer than I have. Billy Hunter, an inspired effort. Why not? A sophomore who's going to have many more opportunities at this. Ben Taylor got to hand it to that guy today. He led the charge. Had a huge game defensively and offensively. Several balls that were caught and a lot of good defensive plays made by, by his linebacker position. And Bel Air takes another humongous step toward a third playoff berth in four years. Billy Hunter, quarterback, sophomore, Brook High School. Ben Taylor, receiver and 
Strong safety, Bel Air Big Reds, your Red Donnelly Scholarship players of the game, and for their efforts this afternoon, WTOV 9 will be sending a couple of hundred bucks to those respective schools for scholarship money. And sacks for a sack, checks for a sack, four sacks. For each sack recorded by either team, Kroger donates $50 to the OVAC, and the OVAC will be the beneficiaries of $200 worth of sack money here today. It is over at Nelson Field. And uh, it is the last appearance this year at Nelson Field for the Bel Air Big Reds as they go on the road to Ironton next Friday night and then to Martins Ferry in two weeks. Wow, a pretty good ball game, Coach. Well, I tell you, you know, it's, uh, it's an ugly win for the Bel Air Big Reds, but it's a win. And, uh, you know, give a lot of credit to, uh, to the Brook Bruins. They came up five points short, but uh, a real spirited uh, performance uh, today. Uh, they, they've gone through a lot, of, a lot over the last uh, couple weeks. Uh, it's about the kind of a year that a lot of people expect from a Brook High School football team. But I think the performance today has to, uh, has to satisfy the Brook fans. Those kids gave everything they had. They're a young football team, and they're going to be heard from in the years to come. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us again on this edition of the WTOV9 High School Football Game of the Week. For Rich Walensky, this is George Kellis. Your final score, Bel Air 12, Brooks.